right? Hello. So a couple people said they were interested in some of the stuff that we talked about when we were making little creatures with um, with Kat the other day. So I figured I'd just do a quick video that goes over some of the tips that she gave us for making small animals. Um, so when you're making a small animal figure, um, it's kind of good to go into it with an open mind. You can have an idea of what kind of animal you want to make, but a lot of times the fun in it is just kind of making a creature and seeing um, what kind of creative creative creature you can make. So this is like kind of like a bear type creature. We've got an owl. Um, but to start a four-legged a four-legged animal, you'll want a piece of clay kind of the size of a golf ball. And to make the four legs, take a rib and you make kind of like a deep cross. So it looks like a little bun. Um, in the clay and then if they're if you're doing a head and Also a tail you can also start to section off some clay For that as well, so that'll help you as you start to pinch um, But then you're gonna you'll start to pinch the different parts of the animal so um, I'm gonna start with that little bit that I just sectioned off for the head just start to pinch that I'll pinch a little bit for the tail or the back of the animal. And like I said, I don't really even know exactly what I'm going to be making right now. Um, but as you start to pinch, you're like, oh, that kind of looks like a cat or that kind of looks like something else. So I started like that and then I have these four little sections that I can pinch to make the legs. So that was the biggest thing, is kind of getting those sections um, off to, to create the general shapes of the animal's body. And then once you get the general form, once the clay is a little bit less firm, you can go back and trim, add texture, do all that sort of stuff. So here we go. I've got my four legs, I can keep pinching them. Try your best not to make any one part of the creature too skinny, because as you know, skinny, tiny little um, decorations on pottery are really prone to breaking. All right, so I have my legs. Do this as the, the head of whatever I'm making. If you want to do some ears, you can put a little indent there and then use that clay to pinch up some ears. Ears are another thing that tend to break off so make sure they're nice and careful. I think this is ending up gonna end up being a fox of some kind. Try to make my face here. And then I'm gonna pinch my tail into the shape that I want and since it's a fox I'll do kind of a tapered tapered tail. It's a little pointier on the end. If you're, ha if you're making something that's like a cat or um, an animal that has a really skinny tail, consider rather than having it lifting up in the air here, if it's really thin, have it kind of wrap around the body so it's stuck to the body so that you don't have that really skinny attachment coming off your piece because half of the time, probably even more than half, that little tail will will break off. So that's the basic shape of the animal. And then once it gets more firm, if you want to go in and add texture or carve away more details, um, you can do that. But the cool thing about these animals is that you know you can really have a pretty animated creature just with the clay at this point. Um, if you want to add texture, you find different tools so that you can add kind of fur textures to your creature. But I really encourage you to kind of play around and see, see what you're able to make. Um, for non-four-legged creatures, so little birds and things like that, they're honestly even easier because you're not making those four legs. So 
for an owl shape, you really just need to make this kind of round oval shape that can stand up like this. And then, and then I pinched my ears. So I just pinched the ears up and obviously this is a very oversimplified owl, but it's, it's a cute, um, cute little totem. You can make keychains. You can add little things to your uh, mugs or the sides of your bowls if you're making functional pottery as well. And then for the eyes, I just took my knuckle here and made a little two little indents. And I just did an indent for the beak. And then for the, the belly part or the, the feathers on the belly, I drew in some extra detail here. And then later when you do glazing, if you want to add even more, like if you wanted to draw in the eyes, you could totally you could do that also. But they don't need to be realistic just to make them fun. Maybe there'll be a little feather tuft on the top of his head. There we go, we got two little owls. We've got my fox here. Just play around and see what you can come up with.